What's good, my dear language learning masters? And welcome to a new episode of the Language Input Podcast, number 42, if I'm not mistaken. And um, yeah, as usual, as you know, my main goal with this podcast is to help you understand that we can all learn any language when join the process, every step of the way. That's right. I'm totally convinced and I'll continue to pound it in your head <laughs> until you you realize that that's actually the case. Because, you know, I've, I've been on both sides, believe me. I've, I've struggled to learn languages in the past as pretty much everyone else because of the horrible traditional grammar approach. And and now I, I just keep learning languages because I love them. I keep acquiring languages, to be precise, because I love it. I love the process and, you know, I'm just, I'm just having fun. I'm just doing that by watching series, reading books, listening to podcasts, talking to people, you know, just fun and interesting activities that I was already doing in my own native language, right? But anyway, let's get let's get into today's episode. Let's go. And today I want to talk about the fact that the true language acquisition process is actually subconscious. All right, so we don't get to control the process <laughs> as we adults desperately desperately try try to do, <laughs> right? We just so used to consciously learning grammar rules, to memorizing words, to paying conscious attention to a specific words when we're listening or reading, to you know to specific words, to word endings, to conjugations, and so on. When what 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 actually matters is is the message, is communication, right? And actually, that, that's the way to learn a language. Like, like I'm always talking about, um, we learn a language by listening and reading when we understand the message. Again, it's that simple. It's, it's all about comprehensible input, right? But it's not, a, it's not a conscious process. Again, it's a subconscious process. So we're, if those requirements are met, if we're listening to the language or reading and we understand the message, we're learning the language. It's that simple. But we don't get to control that process, meaning that it is happening in our heads. <laughs> you know, whether you want it or not, you know, just kidding. Of course you want it, right? But if if you're listening to your target language or reading and you understand and you understand the message, you're improving. You're learning the language. You're acquiring the language, excuse me. You're getting better. It's it's that simple, all right? And, uh, and and the reason why why that's important is because well I mean first of all I believe that's excellent news all right <laughs> but then and I, I, I'll talk about that in a moment but then again it, it's it's just nothing but the truth it's nothing but the same process by which we all acquire our native languages and we continue to acquire new languages you know it's the same process by which every single human being acquire a language in in their lives, okay? Because that's just the way the language mechanism works in our brain, okay? The other idea, the traditional grammar approach idea, is just a desperate attempt from us adults to control the process, to consciously control the process. Because when we don't, whether that's languages or anything else in life, we just freak out, right? <laughs> we adults. But again, it's nothing but a desperate attempt. It's not the way the, the actual language acquisition process works, right? And getting back to the getting back to, to kids and the native language, as usual, I'm sure you can come up with several examples, whatever your native language is or in other languages, but I'll give you once again an example with my native language Spanish that I usually um, that I, I mean that I use mo most times. And whether you speak Spanish or not, you know, you're going to understand what I mean. There's no worries. And the, the thing is, so every single Spanish speaking kid at the beginning says rompido, which is 
I mean, which is the incorrect word for broken, okay? So, I mean, the thing is, that would be... <laughs> I'll, I'll get back to it again. So, rompido, I mean, it, it means broken, but it's it's uh, grammatically incorrect, okay? And th the thing is, um, kids, from listening to the language, from listening to Spanish, and from other examples like beber, to drink, bebido, drunk, yeah? Comer, to eat, comido, eaten, yeah? So, from comprehensible input and other examples, the language mechanism on their brains develops this specific grammar rule, the part participle, I think it's called, <laughs> uh, subconsciously without them even noticing, okay? Without them having to consciously learn the rule, right? And the reason why they say rompido, which again, it would be the regular conjugation, but it's incorrect because that specific verb is just irregular, okay? Like, <laughs> you don't need to know the details, but, you know, you know what I mean. So, instead of saying roto, which is the irregular but correct form, yeah, to say broken, they all say rompido. Because from other examples, like I said, the, the language mechanism in their brain believes that should be the, the, the conjugation, right? And like I said, it's just a teeny, like, like like a little example that I'm sure you can think of many others in your own native language, right? And with what that example tells us is that, once again, the process is subconscious and the language mechanism in their brains develops the language rule without the need of consciously studying the rule, of consciously learning the rule, like, as we adults try to do. All the time, right? To no avail, by the way. <laughs> but yeah, and and I'm I'm often using that example, all right? But like I said, you I'm sure you can come up with many others. But I'm sure you can also come up with examples of, you know, like adults trying to learn a second language. So not not just with kids and the native language, but with adults and other languages, right? That it is that. Comprehensible input is the key to the entire process, and you know, I, I, I've never said that grammar is not important. What I've always said is that you don't need to consciously learn the grammar rules, all right? Because the language mechanism in your brain is going to develop those language rules subconsciously from other examples, from comprehensible input. And getting back to what I said at the beginning, I believe that's excellent news because it means we don't need to consciously learn grammar rules again. We don't need to memorize, you know, a never-ending vocabulary list and so on. And we actually get to relax when we're listening to our target language or relax a little bit more, right? <laughs> because we don't need to be paying cl uh, conscious attention to the specific words being used. Because all we need to focus on is the message, on understanding what's going on, right? And it's just so liberating and relaxing because, like, even myself, that I'm, I'm totally convinced by what I'm talking about today and in every single episode and in, in my, on my project. And still, when I'm watching a series or a, or a movie or listening to a podcast, I still find myself... I still find myself a few times, very few times, of course, but I still find myself paying close attention to a specific words. Again, because of the traditional grammar approach and how many years we've spent in our entire education life learning languages that way, right? It's just a habit, so it takes time to, to break it, right? And I've noticed that whenever I'm paying... I'm, paying attention to specific words and conjugations and so on, as opposed to paying attention to, to meaning, which is the most important thing. First of all, I get frustrated because I just don't... Because w when, when, you're playing, when you're paying conscious attention to specific words, you're doing that with the hope that you're going to be able to remember them and use them, right? But it just doesn't work that way. <laughs> 
so when when I find myself paying close attention and conscious attention to specific words, like I said, wh what I've realized is I get frustrated because I'm trying to memorize them in order to be able to use them later. But like a few minutes later, I just forgotten. I, I've just forgotten that word. I I, I just can't remember because that's how the brain works. You know, and there's nothing wrong with me or. Or, or there's nothing wrong with you if you're listening to this. You know, it's just how it works. So, you know, it brings me nothing but frustration. And not only that, but also I'm I'm not enjoying the specific series as much. Because, again, it just, it's just a hard process, you know. And uh, as opposed to just relaxing and, and enjoying the, the, the movie, the series, whatever it is. And, and focusing on understanding what's going on. Which, by the way, is what you need in order to learn the language, to acquire the language, excuse me, in order to, to keep getting better at it, right? So, you know, to, to, to sum things up here, I think it's, it's super important to understand that, that the, the actual language acquisition process is subconscious. We don't get to consciously control the process, which makes us adults freak out at the beginning, but... I believe it's excellent news in the end. <laughs> when when we actually get to relax and understand this idea, it's liberating, like I said, because we want to constantly control the process all the time, but it's not how it works, <laughs> you know? And I'm, like I said, I, I actually believe it's excellent news and I, I'm glad that's the way it works. I'm glad, I'm glad we don't need to learn vocabulary uh, i mean we don't need to learn grammar rules consciously and memorize words and so on because this is just a boring process at least to me and it just doesn't work that way <laughs> so yeah anyway i hope you you enjoyed this episode and i'm sure you can relate to it i'm sure it happens to you all the time like whenever whenever you're listening to 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 a podcast you're watching a video or whatever it is i'm sure it happens to you as well that you're you find yourself paying conscious attention to the specific words or verb endings or conjugations or whatever it is as opposed to meaning and enjoying the process right or enjoying the specific resource and yeah one, one last thing that i just remember that i see it in like i, I love going to language exchange events and similar ideas. And I, I, I just see it in so many people when they're trying to speak in a different language and they get so frustrated because, again, they're trying to pay close attention to, to the words being said by other people. And then they're saying something and they want to say it the right way, so they say it and then ask the other person if that's the correct way to say it. it just, I mean, it's just like a rabbit hole that it becomes like a weird and not artificial conversation in which, you know, they, they're actually getting frustrated because of it, you know, as opposed to just chilling out and enjoying the process and trying to understand what, what, what the story is about, what the conversation is about, which, by the way, most times they're totally capable of doing. You know, they're to totally capable of understanding what's going on. But they, they just get so frustrated because they want to consciously control or consciously understand every single word that's being said, every single verb ending, every single conjugation, etc. Right. It just, you know, it just, it, it makes all the difference, like I said. And when it comes to relaxing, <laughs> when it comes to enjoying the process, and in the end, once again, it's nothing but the same process by which we all acquire native languages and we all acquire new languages and so on. Because that, that's the way the language mechanism works. You know? And like I said, I believe it's excellent news. <laughs> all right. So anyway, thanks so much for, for listening to this episode till the end, as usual. And yeah, as I'm always saying, if you have any opinion on today's topic, any idea, any question, any suggest, any topic you you you'd like me, you'd like me to to talk about in, in a future episode, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. 
you know, I, I thank you in advance for that. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. And I hope you have a good day, whatever you might be. My dear language learning master. And yep, yeah, bye bye. Ciao.